Famously, Kent Beck has said, I'm not a great programmer. I'm just a good programmer with great habits. Now, Kent Beck actually is a great programmer, but his point is that the way you write code when you're stressed or tired or overwhelmed is a measure of how good a programmer you actually are. And habits are those behaviors that you fall back on when you need to conserve mental energy, like when you're stressed. Code carters help you to improve your habits. So this video is about the best code carters that will help you to become a great programmer. Hi, I'm Emily Bache. I'm a software developer and creator of Saman Coaching. Welcome to the Modern Software Engineering channel, where you can find world-class advice on the technical aspects of software engineering, how to build software using modern approaches, and wider commentary on our industry. Good developer habits include taking small, safe steps, running tests often, and being suspicious of your own ability to write flawless code. Coding as a process involves hundreds of minute-by-minute -minute decisions about how to spend your time and attention, and habits are your default decisions. Should I write another line of code? Should I run the test? Should I tidy up the design? The choices you make will directly affect how good your code is. You will still need to make good decisions even when you're stressed. And that's when you fall back onto your habits. Code carters are interesting problems to solve, yet they're simple, simple enough that it doesn't take all of your brain power just to get to a solution, which means you've got some capacity left to think at this meta level about the way you're working and what your habits actually are. And then, of course, you do a code carter repeatedly and deliberately to build up new habits. I first learned about code carters from Dave Thomas. He's one of the pragmatic programmers, he's written lots of books, and he's one of the signatories of the Agile Manifesto. So he got the idea when he was watching his son practice karate. They were doing these carter exercises where they, they train moves all together with the whole class doing the same thing. Dave Thomas thought about how programmers train, or mostly don't, and he realized that we could do with some of this disciplined practice away from production code. At the time, I was fairly junior as a developer. I was just learning about unit testing and test-driven development. I was very keen to improve. So I began to work through some of these code carters and looking at solutions to them I found on the internet by other people. And I realized that studying like this actually helped me a lot to rapidly improve my skills for designing new code and tests. So I'm a huge fan. I've been using these exercises personally for more than 20 years at this point, and I still get value from practicing. Let me help you to find a good code carter for your situation. And I'm also going to tell you about a common situation where code carters do not help at all. We'd like to thank our channel sponsors who help to support this channel and bring you excellent free content. Equal Experts, Transfic, Tuple, and Honeycomb. Please do check out their links in the description of this video. Most developers spend a lot of time building new functionality in complex systems. And the best approach, in my opinion, is to use test-driven development. If that's not yet your default style, you'll want to build some habits so it will become your default style. And that means habits like running the test often, building functionality in small slices, test by test. And code carters can really help you to learn to do that. There are loads of descriptions of code carters all around the internet, but I suggest you start on the Saman Society website, samancoaching.org. And if you've never done a code carter before, I recommend you start with one of the simplest ones, Leap Years or FizzBuzz. So here you can see you get a description of the functionality you're supposed to build and some examples of the expected results. Don't be put off by just how small these problems are. 
The challenge is not actually to solve the problem and write the code. The challenge is to solve it using test-driven development. You're trying to make that way of working feel normal. So when you can do leap years and fizz buzz really smoothly, I suggest you then go on to tennis or Christmas song or file name range. They're only a little bit more complex than fizz buzz and leap year. There's a bit more logic, a bit more sophisticated output. You might need to design several different functions to complete and you'll need to use some more different aspects of test-driven development in your solution. If you head over to my other YouTube channel, I've recently put out a video demonstrating the Christmas song, and I go through some of the most important heuristics in test-driven development. For a slightly harder Carter, I would suggest trying Mars Rover, or Yahtzee, or Fractions, or Monty Hall. So pick one of those, try the one with the backstory that appeals to you most. Do you fancy exploring Mars, playing dice games, mathematics, or a game show dilemma? All of those carters are slightly more challenging. You'll need more code, more structure, and although they're all self-contained problems, they are fun to solve, and you'll want to try them more than once with different designs using test-driven development because that's what you need to do. You need to repeat the same Carter more than once because you're training the habits for developing new code with test-driven development. Habits come from repetition. You'll need to remember to run the test often, use the test to drive the design, and it's, it's a bit like musicians use scales and they play etudes throughout their career, actually, not because they want to perform those things, but to make those things smooth and natural when they come to a performance. All of the code carters that I've mentioned so far are for training new development skills. There's a whole class of code carters designed to help you to train refactoring skills. I've got loads of those, and I'm going to talk about them in a future video because it's a big topic and they're also really fun and useful, but they deserve their own video. I'll get to when code carters don't help in a moment. But first, beyond pure coding skills, a well-rounded developer also needs to be able to design collaboratively. Pair programming, ensemble, these are important skills in their own right. And code carters can be really useful for training them by working together with others on a straightforward, constrained problem, well-defined requirements, you free up more of your brain power for thinking about how you're communicating with the other people, when you're choosing to speak, how often you're rotating the roles, and what else you can do to improve your collaboration. If you've never done ensemble coding before, I recommend start with a relatively small code carter, like calc stats or shopping basket. Put all of that focus you can onto the people and the interactions rather than trying to understand a difficult domain and solve a different, difficult coding problem. I mentioned earlier, there is a common situation where code carters don't help. And I'm talking about when you want to learn how to use AI coding assistants, like Copilot or ChatGPT. Using these tools well, definitely a skill, but you do not want to use code carters to train it. If you ask an AI tool to implement a code carter like FizzBuzz, they do the entire thing immediately and get it right. One step and you're done, which is not a useful way to do a code carter. The whole point is to practice taking small, safe steps, not this giant leap. Code carters are not a good way to learn about what generative AI tools are capable of either. People usually upload their solutions to a carter to a public hosting service like GitHub or GitLab. And large language models have been trained on all of that code, so they'll have seen hundreds of solutions in the training data. And it is well known that large language models are more capable in situations that are better represented in their training data. You may be aware they are generally better at Python and JavaScript than less common languages like Rust or Haskell. Your AI coding assistant is not likely to behave the same way in a code carter as they will in your closed source proprietary production code. 
So you could use a Gen AI assistant to do a code carter easily, and you think that you're perhaps learning about how to write really good prompts and get the best solutions from it. But I think you're just fooling yourself. My advice is when you're training coding habits with a code carter, go to your IDE settings and just turn off your coding assistant. Instead, work on learning great habits with your old-fashioned deterministic tools. And then when you get back to your production code and you turn the AI tool back on, you get a bonus. If you carry on with your new habits, working in small steps, doing test-driven development, slicing up the problem with tests, I think you'll find that the generative AI tool will give you more help because you'll be asking it to solve a series of smaller problems, which I think is a better workflow for both your brain and the AI tool. One more thing. I've written a short guide to code carters for learning test-driven development with lots more ideas and advice. Follow the link to get your free copy. I hope that you will give code carters a try and become a great programmer like Kent Beck. There are plenty of carter descriptions on the Saman Society website. Plus, we have a newsletter and events that you can come along to. You could also consider supporting us through Patreon, there's one for both this channel and I have my own as well. There are almost no downsides to repeating a code carter that you've done before. The second or the third time, you already know basically how to solve it, which frees up more of your brain capacity for working on the way that you solve it, which is the important part. The only time it could be bad to do a carter again is when you've done it so many times you've got bored with it. And then? There are plenty more code carters to choose from. Happy coding.